Each Christmas, the sound of the King's Choir travels to every corner of the world. It's come to represent church music in England at its very best. Many King's choristers, as well as choral and organ scholars, have gone on to every branch of music, as instrumental and vocal soloists, conductors and organists. But keeping the tradition alive needs special expertise and dedication. The present director of music is Stephen Cleabury. College Choir that I and many thousands of others know. Now the first question I need to ask you is, is it a particularly conscious sound that you get them to make? I think it is. As you can hear, the building does quite a lot to whatever sound you make, in the sense that it tends to make it round and you hear it echoing back. Um, but one can also influence that. In this particular piece, we are going, I think, for that sound that you've described, if we were singing perhaps a Bach motet or something, we would be going for a slightly different sound, and indeed the different language and the different colour of the vowels would achieve that. Now how do you get this sound? I mean, uh, when they come to choir practice in the mornings, do you have a particular thing that you do with them, and if so, could you show us roughly what, what you do Certainly. to get them? Certainly. Well, I'll show you one of the two of the things we do. The first thing is that we try to make sure they're standing up properly, because uh, most of us, and when we are rather lazy and so to sing one should be standing up really well but not at all tense there should be no unnecessary tension so one way of getting this is to ask them to put their hands above their head like this right up if you'd like to do that boys just to show that so right up touching your fingers at the top and then without moving any other part of your body just lower them down to the side like that and the result of that is you find that the rib cage you know that your really standing up a little bit taller than you were before, but not on any account tense. And the other thing which you won't be able to see here is, of course, the position of the feet, so that they shouldn't be standing with their feet absolutely right together, like, nor obviously mm. like that, mm. but just with a nice balance, so that you just feel very relaxed in the right sort of way. So this is the basic of singing technique, that the posture comes so first. that's the posture. Yes. So we tr remind ourselves of that most days. And then we would remind ourselves about breathing and we might do an exercise which we call the kettle exercise and this consists of actually hissing they quite like hissing at me yes. early in the morning and it is an exercise to control the letting out of breath mm. so we begin by remembering that there are in fact two ways of taking in breath yes. uh, firstly through the nose which helps to warm the air anyway which you can do before, if you have, say, a bar's rest before you sing, such as in the PA as you hear. And the other kind, which is the quick breath that you need to take between phrases. But we tend to concentrate here on the slow breath, so we would breathe in for three beats and then perhaps hiss for 12. Shall we just try that, boys? Okay? So breathe in, now, two, three, and then out, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's such a short one that they won't have got rid of all their breath. Yeah. And then we would go on to actually making some sound. Can we I hear think, some of that? Yes. It's early in the morning. We start practicing at 8.15. It's important not to put too much pressure on the voice straight away. So we'd start mm. maybe in the middle of the range yes. and take a reasonably comfortable arpeggio. And... Let's take the Na vowel, shall we? N-A, and take the E major. Okay, just up and down. Two, three. Na, 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 na. Now, we might find that if one took a higher note, let's just say take from G. Two, three. Na, na. Yes. 
found it reasonably easy, one might find that, or when one gets to a high enough one that there begins to be perhaps a little bit of difficulty about the top, we have to remind them that a high note is not in fact up there. That you can see it down in a hole in the ground and this stops the feeling of strain. Yes. And it's important that, uh, I mean, if they were just being looked at by a camera with no sound, mm. it shouldn't be possible to tell when whether they're singing yes. a high note mm. or a low note. Mm. Shall we just try a relatively higher one now? This one, okay. And just remember to think down on the, on the top note, imagine that hole in the ground. Two, three. So the idea is to get the production of the top notes as easy as possible. So what you're looking for now is a soloist then in the PAAs. We're yes. looking to find a boy. Have we yes. one boy who would volunteer or be volunteered, as the case may be? Yes, well, let's ask Charles Stewart, first of all, to see how he gets on with it. about the breathing perhaps? Yes, well that's really the difficulty with this, isn't it? And it's a question of making sure of uh, not to use up all the breath at the beginning of the phrase. To, in other words, try to save it at the beginning, particularly really on the first two B-flats, and then remembering that you have got more breath than you really think on the last note, and you can just give a little bit more length to that last note. Well, I suppose the next stage after this is for them to rehearse it with the orchestra, um, whoever in the end sings the PA yes. or if a group is going to sing it. So perhaps this is the occasion then to let the boys go now, do you think? I think so. I think they've worked very hard. Thank you, you very much, boys. Thank you.